from New York, it's Ask an Engineer. Hey everybody, and welcome to yet another Wednesday night engineering party. It's me, Lady Ada, your party hostess and engineer. With us is Major D. Phil. His yeah. name is Mr. Lady Ada. We can be guests or hosts. If you're a host, you're a robot, and eventually you rebel. If you're a guest, you eventually get killed. Westworld. Okay. It's yeah. a thing now. See, I'm like the only Why would they give the host TNT? Anyways, long story. <laughs> I, I don't even know. They give them explosives. What do you think robots that are rebelling are going to do with explosives? Anyways. Um, I don't know. Chemical yeah. analysis? Yeah. We've got an exciting show for you tonight. Uh, fully non-simulated here at the Adafruit factory, which is completely real. This is all real, not a cyber simulation in your brain. We've got factories. We've got robots. We've got snakes. We've got posters. We've got payphones. We've got all sorts of exciting things going on tonight. We've got a full show right. full of great videos and robots a big galore. Show. This is a big show. Well, let's get, get it started immediately, so we don't run out of time. On tonight's show, the code is MoonLaser, 10% off the native restore all the way up to 11.59 p.m. Eastern Time. 10% off for everything except for gift certificates and Adabox. Use it before midnight or until I remember to turn off the code. It supports us, an open source hardware company here in New York City, manufacturing in the USA. Woman-owned company, no loans, no venture capital. Keep it that way. All Keep it around. Yeah, all humans. We, we even do the turtle question. If you find a turtle in the desert, everyone passes it. Every, yeah, in the interviews. Yeah. A little okay. awkward, but you know, you get a it's check. Fine. It's part of the process. Show and tell. People around the world showing and sharing projects. Lady Ada will go over those. Pack in the mail bag. Going to come by. Going to read your letters to us. Hug reports, as we call them. Time travel. Look back to world makers, hackers, artists, engineers, news and events, and more. Main New York City. Some factory footage. 3D printing. Clips from No and Pedro's show and more. New products. Top secret's gonna be massive tonight. We're answering your questions. Where, where, where? Discord, you should be there now. Make and share with Adafruit on Discord. It's adafruit.it slash Discord. That is where we'll answer questions towards the end of the show. It's where the party is. At the end, we'll do a trivia question. Give you a prize. All that and more on Ask an Engineer. That's right. All right, Lady Ada, let's get this started. We're gonna get this started. Yeah, uh, don't forget, code to Moon Laser, everybody. Moon Laser, I'll tell you why later. Um, when you're shopping, and There's you're adding stuff. stuff to your cart. Free, 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 free. What do they get? I'd love to tell you. If you order $99 or more at the adafruit.com shop, you'll get a free Promo Proto half size breadboard. Very handy for taking your breadboard projects and making them permanent. $199 or more US dollars, you get free UPS ground shipping. That's high quality trackable shipping. Brown truck is going to show up. A very nice UPS delivery person is going to hand you your package. It's awesome. You'll actually get it when it says it's going to be delivered. Uh, 299 or more, you'll get a free Circuit Playground Express, our premier learning and experimentation platform that supports MakeCode, CircuitPython, Code.org, CS Discoveries, as well as the Arduino IDE. So you have so many options for how to use all the built-in LEDs and sensors to build your next cool project. And we even have some new guides that you can build with your Circuit Playground Express when you get it. Okay. And of course, the different forms of shipping, UPS, Postal, and DHL. Our DHL folks are just here. Our DHL is 90, like 99% Rockin'. on time or, at, or ahead of schedule. And it's one of the lowest cost ways to get something international. Someone, they either tweeted or sent us an email and they said they ordered something on like a Wednesday and arrived like Friday in the UK. They said it was faster, easier, cheaper than just getting it from a local store, which is pretty impressive. Um, and then, you, of course, everyone is like, okay, let me calculate exactly how much time everyone had. So we shipped the package almost instantly. It got on the plane almost instantly. Yeah. It got to the UK instantly. It passes customs. It passes so we customs. do the customs paperwork yeah. ahead of time. We have everything pre-filled out. So you don't have to worry about, like, customs delay and stuff. We minimize that as yeah. much as possible. In the USA, we highly suggest UPS Ground because it's yeah. trackable and Postal's okay. It's okay. It's okay. We love, we love it. it. It's okay. But, but, but you're going you're gonna to wait. You're going to wait. Yeah. I think it's – we're listening to people like, oh, I saved – Two dollars by going with postal, but then you lose like two days. Like you yeah. want it to be trackable faster. That. Get UPS. Okay, and if you're in New York City, same day delivery for checkout before 11 a.m. on checkout. You'll see if your zip code is supported in New York City. If it is, you can get it same day. All right, Lady Ada, we had a show and tell, and people showed up. They we do did. every week, 7:30 p.m. Eastern time. It. And uh, why don't you talk about who was on the show and tell? I will. What they were sharing, what they were doing. Okay, we had a bunch of Adafruit peeps, including Colin, who showed off and demoed his two Nintendo Labo projects. He's been taking the cardboard projects that um, are published by Nintendo. He got the Labo kit, and he added Circuit Playground Expresses to them to make them even more light up, reactive, and fun. So check out the video and, of course, the two guides in the learning system. Phil B is going to uh, like a monster costume con. 
the, this week. So if you're going there, maybe you'll see him in a costume. Uh, theoretically, that's where Phil B only goes. It's pretty much... Maker Fair and Monster Crowns. Maybe, yeah, he has a lot and of And a pizza place. He goes to and, place. Yeah, there's a pizza place, which is, I think, also like where the costume con people hang out. I think it's a Monster Pizza Fair. It is. He's called, he calls it Dragon Pizza. Yeah. One time, Lady and I were in a train ride, and we tried to figure out all the times the word salon is used. There was a... Or was a sorry, pizza uh, parlor. Parlor. It's pizza parlor. And then salon was a second Yeah, area. pizza parlor, funeral parlor. Ice cream parlor. Ice cream parlor. So if anyone thinks of any other parlors, we were starting to run out. Okay, sorry. Yeah. We had internet. We just didn't want to use it. That was a game. Um, was Don't a use game. the internet. It's our favorite game. It's a good game. Um... Sorry, so, uh, and then in a week, he's going to be at Maker Fair Bay Area. There will be a booth. There's a lot of eyes. He has a generation of eyes from the first Arduino LED matrix eyes to the latest Raspberry Pi with IPS display eyes. So uh, go uh, visit the booth and check it out. He's been working on making his demos durable. You can say hi to Phil B. Uh, JP teased off tomorrow's uh, JP workshop project. It's a cardboard garage using uh, servo linkages. And um, last week he did a video where half of the video, uh, he had to redo it because he accidentally had um, the audio muted because of the way Wirecast was set up, which he's fixing, but he also made an alert app in Glitch that will um, light up an LED and make a beeping sound for him. So people, uh, there's some trusted people who have the password so that when uh, this happens again, he will be, they will be able to notify him because otherwise he's so into his projects, he's not necessarily paying attention and nobody can tell him, hey, you're, you know, because maybe his phone's off because like, I don't want the phone to ring while I'm doing my live video, but that way people can't get in touch with him to tell him, hey, your audio's muted. Maybe a guide will show up with that too. Uh, Noah and Pedro, uh, this week's project is a circuit playground biscuit that was cut on um, a CNC mill and they also 3D printed a servo gripper so you can turn your servo into a, a grabber. Uh, device, and then we had Isaac, who's built a couple learn guides for us, come by, and uh, he wanted to learn how to use a servo. And when he saw today's, um, this week's Blinka box guide, he decided to build it using just stuff he had in his lab, and he did, and he learned a little bit about how motors work. And that was, he said, it was a cool project. And then he is thinking of maybe making a composting robot that will turn his compost box. And then Adam came by to show off the Jill. 1200 SEM, uh, that's his SEM, the scan after microscope he just picked up. Uh, he's repairing it. There was some uh, air gap problems, but he found uh, some elbow joint that has uncured epoxy on it from like 12 years ago. And he's like, this is not how you're supposed to fix stuff and maintain uh, vacuum seal quality. So he's going to redo that and maybe come by once it's up and running. Okay. And on a side note, massage parlor, tattoo parlor, parlor. thank you, chat. Tattoo parlor, I think we had, yeah. we had we did come Ice up Ice cream, with. pizza. Funeral, massage, tattoo. That could be like a strip But don't mall. you think that's a little unusual that those things But are those things could it? exist in a mall. Like that's this parlor parlor row. A parlor parlor. But we, yeah, we, we couldn't figure out. It's like what, de- what designates it to be a parlor? It's an old-timey word like sarsaparilla parlor. To get dungarees. <sighs> Why don't you say yeah. like a store or showroom? All, right. All participants on the show and tell get an as seen on the show and tell sticker. Email support at Adafruit Tom will send you out one. It's part of our Adafruit live series of shows. JP has a show tomorrow. Tune in for all the action. This is a preview of some of the types of projects that he is doing right now. All right, pack the bell bags here. We read these letters to all of Adafruit every single week at State of the Fruit. And speaking of, I think our Vance is watching on Facebook. Hey, Vance, how's it going? I think I saw him in there. All right, um, here's this week's letter. This one, it's timely because Katni was just at an event. It says, I wanted to thank Katni for teaching a great workshop showing how to get started with Circuit Python and the Circuit Playground Express. I attended Penguin Con. 2018 in Southville, Michigan last weekend. Katni showed us how to set up moves, get Circuit Python running on the boards and how incredibly easy it is to edit and test code fast. Our GitHub has several great examples to show how to use the various sensors and devices on the Circuit Playground Express. The last part of the workshop was combining different things to create a touch enabled light up organ. Fun. Thanks to Adafruit for donating boards so we can try more things at home. I hope to start my own workshops at one oh, i3D Detroit or i3 Detroit, our local makerspace. Thanks, Adafruit and Katni James. Thanks, James, for sending that in. Thanks, them James. All right. 
Now, we got some cool SEM. You've footage. got some time. Go to Adafruit.it.discord. That's where all the. It's a reminder. That's where we're all at. That's where the party is, including party some is. great photos of a scanning electron microscope. Right. Um, some news in the world. Um, MakeCode had a, a really big update. I think they're going to be an announcement next week because we're really fast on the blog. But we're we're, we're ahead super of the fast. schedule. So here's what's cool. The Mindstorm stuff, if you go to makecode.mindstorms.com, you can see that now MakeCode works with Mindstorms. And the EV3. Yeah, the latest. and there's a bootloader thing. This is, this is yeah, a big deal. This is a big deal. You update the firmware, and you can still use it the old way, but then you'll be able to use it with MakeCode, where you can, again, drag and drop blocks around to make activities occur with all the sensors and the motors, and then download the code, um, either the block or the JavaScript, yeah. Um, to your Mindstorm EV3, which is which is really interesting because it's a, you know I actually looked at the UF2 because it's like what it's not it's not a microcontroller it's actually a Linux computer and they have it's basically a Linux binary that they UF2 a five it's just kind of neat they it's they cool. they've done some really interesting stuff and no matter what go to makecode.com and also go to makecode.adafruit.com you can use a circuit playground simulator and if you have a circuit playground plug it in it's so easy to use drag and drop stuff it's super fun I just think it's neat to see how Makecode has evolved from. Microbit to Circuit Playground Express to Maker dot Make Code to yeah. now Lego. I mean, they're they're starting to pick up some. Yeah, you can do Wonder. You could do bots. Minecraft. You could Minecraft. do Microbit. You could do Adafruit. You could do Chibitronics. You could do Lego. You could do robots. I was interesting is the wide range from Microbit, which is this educational BBC project, to us doing Circuit Playground Express, Lego, which is like a massive company with a huge um, educational outreach. Minecraft, yeah. a video game. This is smart. This is smart Lego. Which is like, you know, Sean, Bunny, and J. Chi, like three of the yeah. best engineers I know, and they're like, yeah. this is the right choice. It's 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 neat to see software that so many different groups are using, and all of them are like, and yeah, it's open this, source. Big this up, is the right thing big to up do. to Microsoft. They made it open source. That was one of our things that was important mm -hmm. to us, and the fact that Microsoft is dedicating such an important thing for free to the educational market. Yeah, good work. Total okay. win. Anyway, it's very cool. So we're gonna pick up. We're gonna pick up yep. an experiment with it. Uh, the Minecraft. Uh, right. Sorry, the Mindstorms. Speaking of other stuff, the Circuit Python community and all the things we do every single week, it has momentum, as they say. So we're doing more moves. These Woo. are sensor plotters. So I'm gonna play two because um, we're getting ahead. So JP did a couple. We did some, but I'm gonna play some sensor graphing. Let's check it out. Sensor graphing with the plotter featuring CircuitPython and Moo. Today, we'll be graphing buttons and switch. The Circuit Playground Express has lots of ready-to-use components built right onto the board, including two push buttons and a slide switch. These are really useful input devices. You can program your board to do all sorts of things at the push of a button or two, such as lighting up NeoPixels, playing a song, or turning a motor. The slide switch is great for changing between two modes, such as low and high brightness settings, or forward and reverse for your robot. Using CircuitPython and Moo, we can plot the status of each button and switch. Here we have some simple code running on the Circuit Playground Express, which reads the buttons and the switch, and then prints different values depending on their state. This is automatically graphed to the plotter in Moo. It's as easy as pushing a button. So that's all it takes to graph buttons and switch values on the plotter with Moo. Sensor graphing with the plotter, featuring CircuitPython and Moo. Today, we'll be graphing color. The Circuit Playground Express has a built-in light sensor. This is useful for detecting overall brightness levels, but we can also use it as a color sensor. This is possible because there's a full-color RGB NeoPixel LED right next to the light sensor. By flashing this NeoPixel LED red, green, and then blue, we can detect the amount of each primary light color that gets reflected off of an object and back into the light sensor. Colored objects absorb some frequencies of light and reflect others. So, our light sensor can tell the color of an object just by noting the varied brightness levels as red, green, and then blue light flashes are reflected off of an object. 
this circuit Python code flashes the NeoPixel red and immediately records the value of the light sensor reading, then flashes green and records another light value, and again for blue. Finally, it prints these three values, which allows us to see them appear on the plotter in Moo. Here's our color detector in action. As we hold up this red box in front of the sensor, the NeoPixel flashes red, green, and then blue. The box reflects the red light, so the sensor detects a high brightness value. Since the green and blue lights are absorbed by the box, the light sensor detects low brightness values for these colors. You can see the values are being graphed in real time on the Moo plotter. Notice how the red line is higher than the green and blue ones. We can try this again with a blue object, and the plotter will show us the expected results. With a non-primary color, such as yellow, we see both the red and green rise up in the plotter. Have fun trying this out on all sorts of objects. Shiny ones work best. So, that's all it takes to graph color on the plotter with Moo. All right, we got a lot of CircuitPython stuff this week. So, um, so much stuff. Snake, <laughs> snakes are spinning, it's spinning, it's spinning, it's spinning. Um, first up, if you're not subscribed to our newsletter, that's okay. Um, you can go to adfruitdaily.com and do it. Think of all the joy you'll get from being able to sign up. Joy. Um, this is Blinka, the friendly circuit Python stick. We're doing a paper craft. This one's in beta. And uh, this is for folks to try out. We want to make sure it works. So far, people are doing it. It's working out. And then, of course, we have another one that we're working on. If you have the cricket, or if you just want to cut it out of paper, mm -hmm. we have that too. And this is what it looks like when it's finished. Now I'm Pedro Minute. That's oh, like that's perfect. Nice. Um, also, if you like those awesome lists that you see in the computer programming world, yeah. we have awesome, awesome Circuit Python. You can contribute to it. We just submitted it to the awesome, awesome, awesome list. It's a list of lists. Yeah. And uh, Blink was happy about it. Um, but all this stuff we send out every week, go to adafruitdaily.com and then click Python for hardware. Yep. And that delivers this to your inbox. Thousands of people read it every week. Epic newsletter. It covers yeah. MicroPython, CircuitPython, as well as general purpose Python news that may be applicable, all sorts of cool uh, stuff that we've seen in the community. You like MicroPython, we cover it. You like Python on Linux? Videos, Py, we guides. Cover it. You like CircuitPython, we cover it. Like events in the Python world, we cover it. It's there. Yep. Every week. Okay. Uh, time travel. Look back in the world of makers, hackers, artists, and engineers. I have a lot of newsy stuff this week, so I'm going to put it in this section. I have a question. Why is the guide Moon Laser? I'm glad you asked, Lady. Uh, so, sure. happy birthday, whoever did this project in 1962 at MIT. They shot a laser at the moon. And, it's uh, a good idea. Yeah. You know what? They, they just wanted to shoot a laser at the moon. Yeah. There was no actual scientific basis behind it. Yeah, May 9th, 1962, MIT shot a laser. You know, you measure distance and stuff. Yeah, like that. yeah, but they also just had this gigantic laser, and what are you going to do with I it? I think we wanted to make sure it wasn't going to shoot back. <laughs> that was the main reason. But that's why the code is moon laser. Plus, it sounds cool. Um, okay. So tomorrow, probably around 3 p.m. Eastern time, we are dropping our next interview. This is with Anuk, and Anuk makes the spider dress and other things. You talk to Anuk with Alex from Hackster.io, and probably one of the, the most uh, multimedia interviews because she has all this great footage for all her stuff. So I wanted to just play a couple of them right now. So this is um, spider dress and smoke dress. Cool stuff. Python's going on. The entire core Circuit Python team is going to be there. Dan, Katni, and Scott. Blinka, um, we, Blinka's going to stay here. But, but in spirit, there. she's there. Say hi to them. If you're attending, um, every attendee in their bag, because I got the confirmation, they have a Gemma M0 that's running Circuit Python limited edition. There's also a discount code on it. And they also have these cool business cards that they might give you too. All right. Next up, um, this, I want to give a shout out to DNA Lounge and just JWZ. 
dude made like Netscape, and he's just like he's on the he's internet still on forever. The internet. Yeah, he's, he's he's in the internet. He he's the last best hope we have for making sure the internet is like a good place because he, he he's still the, blogs. He's the guy from Tron. Yeah. With the beard, who's like, I'm the robot. Yeah. Like the, not the robot. So, like the not the mass control, but he's like yeah, the timekeeper. If you're in San Francisco, um, May twelfth, DNA Lounge, they're doing a cocktail robot hackathon. The prizes or gift certificates to Adafruit, and then you're gonna. They have a bunch of Adafruit stuff Build there. Build some drinky robots. Yeah. Well, everybody loves building drinky bots. Yep. And then it doesn't have to be a, a robot that makes a cocktail. It can just be a robot that has something to do yeah, with just cocktails. Serves, serves liquids. Or drink or drinking, or maybe just uh, spears olives. Who knows? Bring it and uh, shut off and win something. Okay. Um, next up, We the Rosies. If you go to wethebuilders.com and you have a 3D printer, please help print out parts everyone is invited to do this this is celebrating all the diversity that we have in the maker world and we're having a rosy print off so you made one um adam savage is involved with this just some high profile people but thousands of people are going to be printing out little pieces of a rosy and we have two videos one from adam savage and one from you to get people excited if you have a 3d printer just sitting there stop printing the the green yoda head we've got enough yodas we've got enough of those print a part of this it's going to be part of a statue 2600 pieces all together it's going to be yeah. like a six foot tall it's going to be thing. super cool so take it away adam savage and then lady ada hey everybody it's adam savage from testit.com here to tell you about something amazing that's happening in june June 9th and 10th in Santa Fe, New Mexico, I will be attending NOMCON, the inaugural Nation of Makers convention. I'll be there all weekend long, working on a bunch of cool stuff, but specifically, I'll be doing a project with my friend, the incomparable Jen Schachter, who's doing a project with a group called We The Builders. They are making, and I'm helping them make, a six foot tall sculpture of Rosie the Riveter. But it's not a singular monolithic sculpture. It's going to be composed of over 2,500 separate 3D printed parts. And this is where you come in. We want you to contribute one of these parts in a variety of skin tones. We don't care what color it is. We want your parts in Santa Fe. I will be helping Jen assemble them into the six foot tall Rosie the Riveter. Go to wethebuilders.com for more information and I will see you in Santa Fe in June. Hey everybody, it's me Lady A here at Adafruit. And I'm 3D printing part of this project, We The Rosies. Now, We The Builders makes crowdsourced 3D printed sculptures. And this year, they're building a giant monument to Rosie the Riveter, um, printed in skin tones to celebrate the diverse identities of today's makers. Rosie is going to be six feet tall and over 2,600 parts. And we need a lot of people to print, help us print them. So anyone can print, um, go visit, wethebuilders.com for the instructions and you can also post a video telling your story and who inspires you. Get a little time lapse going here. Um, some questions that you might want to answer. How does the act of making empower you? Uh, for me, I love to make and share with all the people in the community and see what they're building. And who would Rosie be in 2018? And I think Rosie the Riveter is in a sense all of us. All of us are rolling up our sleeves, getting to work, doing projects in our communities, helping our families, and building together. So thanks everybody for watching. Please join in and help out Print Rosie with We The Builders. And uh, let's get printing. All right, next up. This is news, and this is one of the times I might ask the community for help. So the Boy Scouts announced they're just going to go to Scouts, and they're accepting girls in the, the Cub Scout portion. Um, there's scout, Scouting's been in the news for a while. There, yeah. the, the word Scouts is interesting. It's a very special type of protected trademark. Uh, Hacker Scouts came out once, and they said you can't do that. But um, the Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts have been separate organizations. Now the Boy Scouts is going to be uh, allowing girls for the uh, Cub Scouts age bracket to yeah. start. And it's also allowing like we, trans and, and gay and queer scouts to join. It, yeah, because like things change over time. Yeah. And one of the things that we've tried to do, here's one thing that hasn't changed. So I wrote an article like eight or six years ago that said, and it, the graphic is kind of like, not predicting the future, but it was just like, well, I put Girl Scouts plus Boy Scouts equals like Scouts 2.0. Yeah. So one of the things that we did, we made all these badges for, for young kids because at the time, Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts didn't have anything for computer programming or 3D printing. And and for the most part, Girl Scouts is more ahead. Um, but we made the sash and all this stuff. And we've tried to weave our way within 
the different organizations, and we'll get a hold of a troop and they'll use our stuff. We have an electronic badge we want to do. But if anyone knows a decision maker, Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts or Scouts, whatever it's going to be called, um, drop me a line, PT at Adafruit, because we, we've been trying to do things like, hey, talk to Microsoft, do like makecode.boyscouts.org, do makecode.girlscouts.org, mm. and teach computer science as, as part of it. And this is maybe where the organizations can come together. I know there's a little tension. I read the article and the CEO of Girl Scouts is like, oh, we didn't, you know, didn't expect this. And like, it's all about recruiting, getting more people in. Mm -hmm. Well, if they want to get more people in, computer science and building and electronics and art and crafts and all that, and this is one of the things that can be distributed around the nation because maybe you can't get to those places, but you can participate in those activities. Um, we're also trying to uh, do stuff with 4-H. Like, it's there. It's ready. Low-cost electronics, like a circuit playground, easy to use, drag and drop coding with something like MakeCode, and then you move up the ladder to something like Circuit Python, and Python yeah. programming, or JavaScript, or C++. So I was a 4-H kid, and uh, we're doing some projects, I think. Uh, I have a video later in the show. It's just like water sensing with one of the little 4-H flower pots I got. But um, if anyone does anyone does organizations, email us because it's just hard to find the right person. And like we'll just send you out some circuit playgrounds and just like try it out. A lot of this stuff fits on a sash. We made it that way. Yeah. And this is one of the projects we did on Learn. So anyways, next up, um, I did a post about this. There is a cardboard building community called Labo Builders, which is kind of neat. And they're all sharing already designs to make in cardboard. Yay. Cardboard. It's a theme. It's, it's a, a theme, theme lady. It's a theme. It's, so, a, it's a moon laser. Take a look at it. Watch carefully, because I think we're going to see more cardboard Colin stuff. is, like, totally yeah. Okay, open source hardware news. Lady Ada, we have a lot of tutorials. We have 1,449. Ooh, we're closing in on 1,500. Yeah, what's on the big board this week? Okay. We have, uh, from Jump Park, uh, last week's uh, video, uh, uh, last week's uh, live stream at JP's workshop was on slider crank mechanisms. So this is the guide that goes with it. It shows you how you, you can turn the rotational motion of a servo into the linear motion using some cardboard, some craft sticks, um, just gluing them together and making a crank mechanism. Um, very handy if you want to uh, have something, you know, you want a linear actuation motion, but you don't want to pay for a linear actuator. You can use I don't pay server. for that. No, they're expensive. Yeah. Servers work great. You just need a little bit of uh, effort. We've got Dano's uh, cardboard hacking project, the Snake Charmer Box, a really great simple Circuit Playground Express project uh, in MIT code. Um, that makes a, a snake jump out of a box and then plays a little tune with it and then the snake uh, goes back in the box and resets. So um, a cute little prank project, but also a great way to learn about basic robotics and how to make a cam with a servo. We've got uh, double-sided PCB milling with the Ruse Brothers. They're using uh, the Bantam tool to make a, um, a, a, a piece, a biscuit that fits on the back of a circuit playground so you can attach it with screws and then you can plug it into a breadboard or attach wires easily. And then uh, Blitz City um, made a really cool motorized turntable. She wanted one for her projects uh, to video them because it looked cooler if they're turning, but also thought like, hey, this is a good project to show everybody, you know, wants to have a little turntable, uh, maybe for th uh, 3D scanning or for videoing. So here's how to make one completely out of 3D printed parts, uh, an itsy bitsy, I think, and a servo, a continuous rotation servo. So a very easy um, and fun project that you can build to make things go round and round. Okay, that's all the tutorials. We have more coming up soon, everybody. I can't wait till we get to 1500. We're getting close. Getting there. Okay, um, also, you know you know you're an artist? Your stuff's in a gallery. Yay! Um, this is our Bitcoin miner. Um, yeah, that's and our shield. It's in the VA London Museum. It's like Victorian Arthur or something like that. And it's, uh, it's on the display. The VA? The VA is famous. Yeah. yeah. But that's what it stands for. I have to look it up. It's like Victorian. The Victoria and... Uh, Someone in the chat will piss it off. Yeah, I don't remember that. But uh, it's in the museum. And this we sent this a long time ago. Yeah. And uh, it's there now. I have a blog post. And in open source hardware news coming up soon is the open source hardware summit. September 27th. Hardware summit. Yeah. Coming up. It's going to be in... It's Victorian Albert. Yeah. Victorian yeah. Albert. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Mike is a traveled individual. Yeah, actually, I think it's part of his job to know all the, like, like, yeah. all the capitals and locations. I've been there. It's a really cool museum. Yeah. Um, so we're probably going to be there. We're not sure. But um, anyways, uh, we're, we're a sponsor. We're yep. donating. Okay. Made in New York City. This is factory footage here in New York City where we make this stuff. We post these videos. We have these videos every week. It's kind of like that show, How It's Made, but it's like how, how, it's, how, how it's made at Adafruit. Yeah.
at some other still photos and videos. This is, uh, it's always fun to take photos of liquid hot metal. Yeah, this is the solder bar. We get, um, for the selective solder machine, we actually get the solder in a solid bar that we then cut up and um, slowly dip into the solder pot to melt it. And this is us press it, prepping. These are some TFT Screens. breakouts or shield, this is, oh, sorry, Raspberry Pi hats. So we saw it on the TFT display. Here's us doing the Metro M4s. Yeah, this is selective solder, getting all the headers and the terminal blocks and everything for our our uh, metros and shields. And here's Dano making a paper craft blinker snake. Remember the thing I was showing you? Yeah. How's that? Do 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 do. I'll do the music. This is the fun part. Never ends. Never ends. Yeah. Glue it. Now you got a snake. Okay. And this is what the pick a place fall asleep to. Beautiful springtime New York right now. It is lovely out. All right. Next up, Adafruit IO has an update. Go on the blog right now. It's a big deal. It's always a big deal. We got we, two things. Yeah. Dashboards and new Ruby client. So oh, do you dashboards want to talk about? pretty cool. So um, we always had like points were visible, but now we have a really nice legend that when you um, mouse over a graph, it'll tell you the exact number for the points. So it's like a really neat way of, of comparing all your different graphs and you don't have to like look at the table. So you can see the, the pop-up. It's just a really cool yeah. little element to help you uh, see all your data and ex exact values. So you can see the trends with the graph and the um, actual data points by mousing over. And next up, Ruby IO library, we went to version two. This is a long time coming. And you'll probably notice there's performance increases and more. And we're also working on our Arduino, Python, JavaScript, and Go. And we welcome contributions. All of our libraries are open source. And don't forget, the cool thing about Adafruit IO, you can support it. You can get it passed for the month, for the year. We have that on Adafruit.io. Um, we have this service. We'll always have a free version, but if you want to support it so we don't have to sunset it and go on our beautiful journey and spend time with our kids or something, you know, do that. <laughs> we don't have, this is a point we don't have family to, yeah, to spend have, time with. The so. community is a family, so support us. Um, 3D printing, no and Pedro have a few videos. This is a double-sided PCB video, and then we're gonna do a speed up right after that. So take it away, no and Pedro. Yay! Hey, what's, what's up, good? guys? In this project, we're gonna CNC mill double-sided PCBs. This is a shield for the Circuit Playground Express that allows you to easily connect jumper cables. For breadboarding the Circuit Playground, you'll need some special alligator clips with jumper cables. It's nice because there's no need to solder so you can quickly start prototyping. But connecting lots of components can become a little messy and cluttered. Dave Astell's guide on the Adafruit Learning System shows how you can DIY your own shield for the Circuit Playground using PerfBoard. So this got me thinking if I could mill my own using the Bantam Tools Desktop CNC. This machine is great for making custom PCBs and their software makes it really easy for beginners to get started. So I designed a shield in Autodesk Eagle using Lady Ada's PCB design. I referenced the pin layout and board dimensions to make a PCB with standard header pins. The traces and clearances are set up for milling so it's optimized for machining with a single tool. The Bantam Tool software has preset profiles so it's easy to configure the material. The 3D workspace allows you to visually see everything making it really easy to place multiple copies. In order to do double-sided PCBs, first we'll have to set up the fixture. This alignment bracket is secured to the edge of the spoil board with machine screws. The tool head uses the bottom of an end mill to probe the edges of the bracket. This touches various areas and stores the offset so the machine knows the exact placement of the material. My plan is to use a 132 inch flat end mill to do all of the milling operations. This is my go-to tool for cutting traces, holes, and the board outline. Setting it up in the software configures the settings and automatically probes the spoil board. These double-sided FR1 boards from Bantam Tools are pre-cut so they fit nicely on the machine. Wiping them down with some alcohol and a paper towel will get rid of any grease and oils. I'm using double-sided scotch tape to secure the PCBs to the spoil board. I like to space out the strips so there's clearance between them which will make it easier to remove later. We'll need to align the board to the lower left corner with the edges being as flush as possible. You'll want to apply pressure evenly across the PCB to fully adhere it to the bed. 
For the top layer, we can set to only cut the traces, so we'll save the holes and outline for the bottom layer. And once we're all set up, we're ready to make some traces. The software configures the feed and speeds automatically. The cutting depth is set to default, but it can also be customized. I'm using a fan bit to blow away the dust. It attaches to the cutting tool. This took about five minutes to cut the three boards, which is really fast. Once finished, you'll want to use a vacuum to clean up the dust. Before removing from the bed, I like to use a scotch bright pad to lightly sand away any burrs. Here I'm doing the alcohol trick to soften the adhesive from the tape, and this makes it much easier to lift the board off the bed without bending it. I use a thin spatula to get underneath the board and in between the strips of tape. Next up, we'll need to add some more tape, this time to the top side. Then flip the board over so the artwork is facing down and towards the right side. Now we can line up the lower right corner with the alignment bracket, again being as flush as possible. Once again, it's a good idea to wipe down the surface. In the software, we need to make sure to set the bracket to the right side. Also need to turn on the holes in the outline for each board. Once we start it back up, the machine will run through all of the traces first. Then it'll drill each hole. After that, it'll take a few passes to cut the outlines. This process takes about 10 minutes with all the traces, holes, and outline. Still, it's a very quick process. After that, you'll want to spend some time vacuuming all the dust. There's a good amount here since we cut multiple copies. Again, using a piece of Scotch-Brite to knock out any rough edges. Doing the alcohol trick here yet again, being very cautious with the spatula, trying not to mar the copper surface. If you look at the other side, you'll see the outline didn't cut all the way through, but that's easily fixable. You can use an X-Acto blade to cut the thin layer of copper. Just follow the contour of the cut and be careful. You can also cut away any rough edges and excess. I also use the needle to poke holes for each of the pins. I'm using strips of header to bridge the top and bottom layers since there's no through hole plating here. These two are spaced out to fit nicely on top of a breadboard. So you can lay the board flat on top which makes it easier to solder. I set up the header pins with the oblong shaped pads because I found it easier to solder since it has more surface area. I needed to remove the plastic holder from the header so that I could solder the other side. This way we can make solid connections to both sides of the board. I'm using M3 sized machine screws and hex nuts to secure the PCB to the Circuit Playground Express. This is a mechanical way to connect the two boards together and it's still possible to remove if we ever need to. To make more connections you can add as many screws and nuts as you like. A quick continuity test with the multimeter lets us know that we have solid electrical connections. This makes it so much easier to plug in jumper cables like from a micro servo. There's plenty of extra pins to work with so you can hook up all sorts of components. So if you're interested in making your own, check out the guide on the Adafruit Learning System. There's lots of projects there so definitely check it out if you're looking for inspiration. My PCB file is also available to download so you can make your own, links are in the description. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more DIY projects from Adafruit.
all this stuff you can every single week with no Pedro or 3D Hangouts on Wednesdays. A um, little bit of a reminder. I got two. One, codes moon laser. Take that moon. We shot a laser at you. You have a moon. You have a laser. What else are you going to do? Yeah. And uh, if you're already an Adabox subscriber, thank you so much. If you want to help out more, you can give it as a gift, especially to a young person. This next one, I'm going to talk about some of the stuff later in the show. It's all about robots. So you want to do this. Um, if you're not a subscriber, go for it. Please, please, please. This will help us keep doing Adabox. We even make a little video that I'll play now. products, but if you have a need for the account, sign up for the new product newsletter and get all these delivered to your inbox. Here we go. Okay. New, 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 What do we got this week? Okay. Got a lot of fun things this week. Starting off with this heavy stainless steel PCB vise. Um, I really like this vise. It's really heavy and it's got this like spring, like tri wing action. Um, it's great for SMT rework in particular. And I just like that it's really heavy. It weighs about a pound. So you can show it on this overhead. It's kind of cool. Um, this is originally like sold for reworking um, cell phones. It's great for like thinner PCBs. Um, oh, can you move the... Uh, oh yeah, I'm just doing multiple Yeah, just because you can see you don't have a ton of clearance. So it's really good if you're working on like single-sided PCBs or PCBs that are mostly surface mount. What's nice is it's really easy to set it up. You basically get this um, spring action here and these move. So you set it up by um, finding two spots that you can hook into and then you pull this part back and now it's like nice and solid. Like it's not going anywhere and you can rework and push and prod and it, it doesn't move easily. It's nice and heavy. So this is great for um, a nice flat vise if you don't want like a, a tall one. We also have a, a nice one for uh, through hole work. Um, it's the uh, Pros Kit, but this one from Kai is uh, great for when you don't need a lot of space and your boards aren't too big. So maybe like two by three and a half inches. Okay. Next. Uh... This piece of metal. This piece of metal is for mounting uh, our TT motors. These are these plastic gearbox motors. This um, piece of metal is just like the perfect size and has holes and it even comes with all the screws and nuts to attach it. So I'll show that on the overhead as well. Um, two long screws go through the body of the gearbox motor um, and then um, this piece connects and you screw it through and it attaches uh, quite strongly. And then you get four screws, uh, M3 screws and nuts to attach to your plastic or metal or, or cardboard thing. And it's pretty solid. So this is just like, you know, a, a chassis that Angelica made. And, uh, you know, it's solid. Like it's, it's not really moving anywhere. The cardboard bends, but this mount does not. And having the four points means it, you know, even through a uh, material that could tear, it, it's not going to. It's, it's pretty much stuck in place. So it's a very simple, low cost, uh, nine degree mount. Works really well. Okay, next up. Use the power of the sun to solar your <laughs> to solar power your solar. projects. Uh, for Voltaic, um, we carry a lot of their solar panels. This is a one watt panel. It gives you about six volts and about um, I think 180 milliamps. Uh, it's like this really lovely color. It's got uh, a protective uh, epoxy coating and it's got um, mounting screws on the back so you can attach it to stuff. And it's got these little plastic nuts that uh, let you attach it to fabric or cardboard or wood or paper, whatever. And it's, um, it's very weatherproof, so you can use it outside. It's designed for outside use. It comes with a 1.3 millimeter DC jack, and we have in the store little adapters that let you plug this into a 2.1 millimeter DC adapter. Um, not great for powering something directly because, again, the sun comes and goes as the clouds or um, somebody walks in front of the 
solar panel, the voltage will dip. So you should use this to charge a battery that then powers your project, and that's kind of the best way we recommend using these solar panels. But we really love their panels. They're extremely durable, uh, high quality. Um, they're made in Malaysia, and um, just excellent panels all around. The yep. same panels used in their products are now available to makers. Okay. These are super cute. Come here. Kitten bot. Um, we got all the colors. We do have all the colors. We'll show the, the front with the micro bit inside of it. Yes, yeah, so these are these silicone cases for micro bit by Kitten Bot. They're totally adorable. They're like kind of little angry kittens. Um, so I can show they come in two pieces. The bottom half, um, it's like a snug fit. It does, once, once you have it on, you can still alligator clip to it, uh, or you can remove it if you want to plug it into something that has a breakout. And then this whole body is silicone, so it, it easy to remove and add. It doesn't like tear or rip or anything. I think it's good because kids have like micro bits and if they're in their pockets and they're just like, yeah, this, this is a good idea. It protects it. I, you know, it's, it's like a nice little thing. You just squeeze it on and then um, we set buttons there. It protects the battery jack and gives you these little ears so you can easily turn it into a wearable. And um, you might be wondering like, okay, well, what about the LEDs? Can what you about see the LEDs? them? What about, it? what about it? But the LEDs shine through. The, the oh. plastic... Uh, sorry, the rubber here is extremely thin, like it's cut out on the bottom and on the That's top. That's smart. So you can still see the LEDs just fine. In fact, they're nicely diffused. It actually makes yeah. them look a little bit better. Um, and you yeah. get this little angry cat. So that's the kitten bot. Feeding and yeah, we have here. kitten bot case available in orange, red, orange, yellow, light blue, and dark blue. Okay, and tonight at the start of the show, tonight besides our community and eight of her team members, these and you, these LED strips. We have... New <coughs> pixels with alligator clips by popular demand. Um, some people, especially teachers and students and people doing workshops, are like, hey, I don't want to have to strip, cut, wire, screw, solder, whatever. Neo pixels, I just want to clip them on and be done. So, um, clip it on a micro bit. Here's in a couple fact, of close ups. And we have these in what, two different colors? We have two different lengths. Two different lengths. Um, I'll explain. The first length, we have. Let me do the overhead. Let me do the overhead is 30 LEDs per meter, so it's kind of like this, you know, big, um, like two inches apart or so. And um, you get a full meter, and at the end it's sealed, because we want to make this kind of durable. Uh, you get red, black, and white. Red is, of course, uh, three volt power, so you can clip that on here. Black is the ground pin, so I'll clip this on. Slippery. Here. And then white is the signal pin. And we use the SK6812, which is a um, NeoPixel compatible chip that does not need, oh, this is really slippery, hold on. There you go. Um, does not need a resistor or capacitor. So you can just plug them in directly. And then if I reset this, Look at that. It comes up. It's a NeoPixel strip with rainbow in it. Here, so uh, maybe hold up the strip. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to right here. I can just show it. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. There you go. So Rainbows. one meter long of 30 LEDs per meter. So you get 30 LEDs. Um, NeoPixel it works with, like, you know, every NeoPixel whatever library. Um, you can use these chips with 3-volt logic and power. So it works fine with the micro bit, even though it's only a 3-volt regulator. Okay. Uh, haven't had any issues with it. And then we also have another version, which is 60 LEDs per meter. Just when you thought it couldn't get better, um, it got better. And to keep the cost reasonable, because I'm I th I thinking we'll start with like you know basic strips. It's twice as dense, so they're about you know one inch apart. Um, but you only have half a meter, so it's a shorter strip but more dense. So you have the longer, less dense, shorter, more dense. Same number of LEDs. You get 30 LEDs per. Um, just different lengths. So I thought, you know, this would this would cover a lot of people's projects. Um, honestly, especially from the micro bit, you don't want to power too many LEDs because, again, that regulator isn't really designed to power a ton of NeoPixels. So I thought this was, like, you know, a pretty safe number of pixels. 30 is, like, a pretty, you know, you're not going to go too crazy with that. You're not going to overload your, your micro bit or the, your circuit playground. If you want, you know, a, a five-meter long strip, um, you're already a more advanced um, maker or crafter anyways. So works great with the circuit playground as well. Just again, power to the red clip, ground to the black clip, and white to the signal clip. And then you can use it with circuit Python, Arduino, make code, whatever. Uh, just really, really easy to get going and then um, 
reusable, recyclable. So make it with one project, disconnect, and then connect to another project. And with that, this new product is Yay! So many pixels. Are we ready for a recap? Yep. New product recap, go. We've got these nice, heavy PCB vices, great for SMT rework, uh, about two by three and a half inches worth of workspace, a little spring clip to make it really easy for you to rework uh, your boards. Got a TT geared motor mount, uh, comes with all the hardware you need, attached on the side with two long screws to your TT gearbox motor, and then you get four M3 screws to attach to whatever chassis you have, great for mounting those motors. From Voltaic, this high quality weatherproof uh, one watt, six volt uh, solar panel has some mounting uh, screws on the back and a DC plug. It's a really high quality one watt solar panel. Kittenbot micro bit silicone cases. These slide over your micro bit, come in five colors. You can have LEDs shining through. It adds two little ears for mounting onto your wearable project. It's just a great little case. We just think they're adorable. And finally, we have two LED strips. We have a 60 LED per meter half meter and a 30 LED per meter one meter with alligator clips on the end so you can clip it onto your Circuit Playground Express or your micro bit uh, to make it very easy to add NeoPixels without any soldering or wire stripping. All right, that's it. New, new, new. Okay, uh, don't forget the code is WinLaser. 10% off a native restore all the way up to 11.59 p.m. We're going to do some questions soon, but it is time for some top secret. Okay. What's the top secret for today? Okay. We're going to talk about one of our new products that is coming out. It's been on the blog. Make out an article. It's making the rounds. It's going to be shipping very soon. It is Cricut. And Cricut is our new low-cost robotics. Anything can be a robot. And uh, this is the board. Yes, yeah, this is a 3D model. We'll have these in the store very soon. And one of the goals is to make robot friends. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll retell this story. Um, a million years ago, I was working on uh, these Curio robots uh, when I worked for an agency that uh, did the filming. We had to do some of the programming. And the Curios were these humanoid robots with dance around. And I, I later was able to post up footage because all those people aren't doing that anymore. And um, I talked to one of the senior engineers elderly uh, Sony engineer mm -hmm. and I said oh did you see the Asimov they just, like Asimov came out after the, there was like a a race to have the humanoid robot that would go around the world and be like the brand ambassador yeah and I said well you know it, like it's very different Curio was about like reading the kids and it was your friend and it was a companion it's a mm -hmm. robot friend and the Asimov was more like uh, you, it would go do things for you, fetch your slippers, get you a drink, mm -hmm. um, get the paper, yeah. hold a gun. I didn't have a gun. <laughs> but um, I said, what do you think of that? And he said, Trenson, it's very important. Make robot friend, not robot enemy. Don't make robot slave. Mm. And it really hit me because it's like, wow, what a neat approach. So um, years later, we did this poster, Make Robot Friend. And Cricket is all about making robot friends. These aren't really, not battle bots, not like that's covered. Mm -hmm. These are robot friends, art bots, other types of bots. So Cricket can do a few things. So I just wanted to go through some of the demos and some of the things that we've we've started to show. First one, uh, JP got this. This is just him testing it out. He's the, our first beta tester. Making sure all the motors, uh, he's doing all these projects. Um, and you'll see more and more guides soon. And other things, uh, if you wanted to do a very simple, you got a cardboard box, you got some paper, no problem. Other stuff. Um, very simple things, like if you just wanted to have a couple motors and just have uh, something like a, a, a car yeah. go. Um, in this particular example, I put googly yeah, eyes on two motors, yeah. and those are like the minions. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. these are experiments that we're doing here to make sure like everything's working out really good. Then there's ones where, what if you just you're an artist or a young person, you yeah. like you like doing paintings, mm -hmm. or you like taking other people's paintings and doing stuff with it. Yeah. Um, well, you can make art that moves, and this was one example we did. Now, what if you um, order stuff from Amazon and you just have this Amazon box everywhere? It's like this is a perfect robot enclosure. Which is enclosure. like everybody's life. It's a perfect robot enclosure. You might not think that 
right now, but maybe you will soon. This is a trash panda. Now, what if you had a favorite movie from 1979 called Disney's Black Hole, <laughs> yeah. and it had a very this is getting obscure, <laughs> and it had a very touching scene with Vincent and Bob. Bob was the the older robot. He was kind of a trash robot, and uh, it was one of the. I saw this when I was like four, and this yeah. is like my first experience no. with like a robot dying. No, I can't make it. But um, you can remake just about any. 1979 robot yeah. with Cricket. So animatronics, or as Walt Disney, as I was told, called them audio animatronics, because mm-hmm. it is animatronics to do audio. But uh, we made this is a little bit of a tribute video, and it's also um, you can take uh, two plastic cups and do the eyeball movements from yeah. Vincent and Bob. Um, so here I'm going I'm to show the video. Or if you're like all young people have like favorite music, there's um, albums, there's new music videos, there's old music videos, and let's say if maybe you're stuck in the '90s. Let's say if you're a really fan of Nirvana's Heart Shaped Box in Utero, and you're a fan of the director's cut version that came out not too long ago, well, you can make your own heart shaped box with crows and stuff like that. And uh, that's one of the things that that I did. And uh, here's the music video I made. And there's tons of things that you can do with 3D printing. There's tons of things you can do with really expensive electronics. But what if you just wanted to make a, a robotic hand and all you got is some straws and some cardboard? Well, we can lend a hand with that. Okay. Here is a robot hand. Handy. And last up, um, and this is a video I wanted to, to play, so you can do lots of advanced things with something very simple. Mm-hmm. So we have a soil detector, but you can also water the plants, churn, compost. We talked about that in the mm-hmm. show and tell. So I wanted to play well, one video that goes along with this. This is uh, one of our latest videos that we did with Moo and Circuit uh, Python, and this is watering plants. We got one of those 4-H um, flower pots. It's springtime. It's springtime here at Adafruit, and I just got my 4-H clover kits, and I thought I'd take a shot at making a planting helper with my Circuit Playground Express. The Circuit Playground Express can detect capacitive touch, which uh, is affected by soil moisture. So in this plant, um, I have dry soil, and so the LEDs are red, letting me know that the plant needs to be watered. And then in this pot, I have a plant with some damp soil, so you can see if I move the sensor over, 
the LEDs will turn green. That lets me know that this plant does not need to be watered. And over the next week, as the soil dries out, the LEDs will turn red to let me know, hey, it's time to take care of this plant and water it a little bit more. And last up, this will probably be hitting the App Store for iOS devices. Yeah, I'll do some for Android. You know what the thing about the Android stuff is, I just want to say? Yeah. So every time we do an Android version of anything, no one says thank you. They but leading up until that moment when we're working on it, everyone's like, you need an Android version. We're like, we're going to do one. Well, they also don't purchase them. But well, well, no, this is the problem, though. If it, there's, not the, there's not the other side of the coin. Thanks no, for the Android. Never, the, yeah. It's like Android version. Like, okay, we're talking about this iOS stuff right now. We already said we're going to do an Android version. You don't have to flood everything with Android version. When we do it, can you at least say, great Yay, Android, great you. acknowledged thing that's there. Anyways, yeah. so um, we have... Um, uh, a new app coming out. It's uh, an AR app, yeah. and uh, this is off my phone, hot off my phone. Um, we're in. This is from Test Flight because I had to test the app, and this is um, just part one of many, many parts. And by the way, all this stuff is going to work together with cardboard and everything that we do, and blah blah blah. But um, this one, you find a flat surface, and then you can put AdaBot anywhere. And once you put AdaBot, AdaBot does what AdaBot always likes to do: is dance around. Hey, I'm AdaBot. Um, you can make AdaBot big or small. Um, you put AdaBot back in the box. Um, but this is th just the first of many things that we're doing with AR. Yeah. Um, we wanted to have something fun and special for folks who have phones and like Adabot and want to start experimenting with this. So it's super uh, cool. Yeah. Uh, so check out our uh, blog probably this Friday or so, or if you're uh, in the apps, are often just search for Ada for you. So with that, Lady Ada, that was our top secret. <laughs> Get that was, back in that vault. That was a lot. That vault is just jam-packed. Okay. All right. Don't forget to go. Let's do some questions, Lady Ada. Yeah. Where can we answer questions? I would like to answer some questions. Where? Oh, where? In Discord. Oh, right. You should go to Discord. Yeah. Adafruit.it slash Discord. Okay. And that's where we're going to look for questions. All right. So we're looking now. So here it is. Question is, is the RFID shield able to communicate with another RFID shield? If not, do you have anything that can? Um, no, there, we don't have any shields that can do that. You need something that can act in like an emulation mode. It's not that common, honestly. Um, usually you communicate through like another chip or something. Yeah, yeah RFID is not, it's kind of not designed for that. You might want to use like a ge general purpose RF chip instead. Okay, we'll answer this one, even though it's a, um, not out yet because we already talked about it. Uh, what boards will the Cricut interface with? Well, at least three. So Circuit Playground, for sure, because you saw you just videos saw that. on that. Feather, because I think I posted and I leaked it in the Discord chat. We did a while ago. And you could, of course, expect, because we have these microbit connectors, that you'd probably be able to pop a microbit on there. Maybe at some point. So that might be the boards that we interface with, but those are probably the boards. For sure, Circuit Playground, for sure, Feather. Yeah. Okay. For sure. Um, some folks said, thanks for all the iOS apps. Okay, T, that's yeah, a nice Yeah, thank you. Yeah, um, Google I.O. is going on right now. I'm gonna have my IO assistant call. No. Um, <laughs> hi. Um, hi. Can I? I don't, we don't think that's a good idea because you know if if I've had to work every type of job and yeah. if I was always worried that it was a robot that was faking being a person. Well, I, people actually email you all the time and say, "Are you a robot?" Because I email enough. I email fast. Yeah. yeah. Uh, will the source code for Ada Body Air app be released? I don't see why not. I mean, I think we want to get kind of far. I mean, we've done yeah. other stuff, but I don't know. It won't be supported. Yeah, like you're, you're still going to be on your own. One of the problems is like for app development, we don't want to support app development. So I don't know is the answer for right now. Yeah. Um, is there a circuit Python library for the 24 LED bar graph backpack? There isn't a specific library for it, but there's a library for that chipset. So if you don't mind doing the code to rearrange which segment is which bar. I mean, the, the code is there for the chip. It just doesn't, we don't have a fancy interface for like, oh, light up this one orange and this one red. Yeah. Phil is in a robot. He's a journalist cyborg. Yeah, I, you know, Transmetropolitan is one of my favorite. Mm. Uh, it's, it, but I mean, was Spider Jerusalem a cyborg? I mean, he had cybernetic stuff in it. He wasn't a cyborg. I mean, he was still human. But, but, he, but, but he had, he had Everybody things. did, though. Yeah. Is this the same as the Matrix follow-up? It's on not identical. I mean, it's a different shape, but the code, the, the chip is the same. Yeah. Uh, is the app on the Google Play Store, Circuit Playground, a legit air free? Yes. We actually do have Circuit Playground, the calculator, on both 
uh, Android and Google iOS, Play Store. Yeah. That's actually one of the other things. Someone said, is that a legit thing? Yes, for us it is. But other people, there's lots of things in the yeah. Google Play Store that's not legit. I'd be careful. Yeah. Uh, let's see if there's any more questions. I think that's going to be it. Um, oh, could you ever possibly do a tour of the Adafruit factory, maybe even like live on a show? That's a good question. Oh, well, what's this? Dun dun. That's my desk. That's the desk of Lady Ada. And I wonder if you could do a little tour, Lady Ada. I could. Okay. So that's my desk. Yeah, we have a selective solder machine. Yeah, let's go to selective solder machine. Let's go. Zoom, 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 zoom. That's the selective solder machine, the Kiss 102. It's it's quiet right now, but it's full yeah. of solder. It actually stays on all the time. All right, well, what's this? That is the nitrogen generator. That extracts nitrogen from the air so we don't have to buy tanks of nitrogen. And it feeds it into um, the selective solder machine so it has an inert environment to do the selective soldering in because we do lead-free and it has to be a clean yeah. air. Most of the universe is like nitrogen until so conclusive proof of maybe dark matter. But, um, right, but this is just very, We've very got plenty of pure. nitrogen. We have plenty. It's not yeah. like helium. We've got plenty of nitrogen. No, nitrogen we've got tons of. But All this right. just makes it so it, it pulls out And then out there's here. this thing that we use. It's like it's hot. I don't forget the name of it. The oven? Oh, is it called the oven? Oh, yeah, is that's oven. the oven. That's her oven. Um, also off right now, but uh, you can see the the heat uh, pipes coming out. So we yeah. vent it um, so it doesn't get too hot. And uh, boards go in the far end and come out the near end. Oh, yeah, most of the near end. Sorry, hydrogen is most of the near end. But nitrogen is like... Nitrogen's a lot, though. It's a lot. Nitrogen's a lot. You're right. And what else we got? Um... Uh, those are the two picking places, the SM41, SM42. They got some wheels in them, ready to pick in place tomorrow. Yeah. And then, uh, in case people are wondering, is this live or did we just like record this? No. In fact, I'm going to prove it. So there's Desk of Lady Ada. Wait, I'm where gonna, are you going? I'm going to go over to your desk. Whoa. Look at me, I'm Lady Ada. Oh, wait. I'm Lady Ada. Okay. You should look angrier. What? Yeah. All right. Okay. Now you're back. It's live. In case you're wondering. Anyways, we have a robot cam that we're using the control over there. Okay. To see Too funny. Okay. So um, that is uh, the Life Factory tour. Thanks for someone who asked that question in the past. We just got to it now. Let's do a trivia question, Lydia. Sure. What do you want to give away? We're gonna give away um, one of our uh, NeoPixel strips with alligator clips. We're gonna give away a product number 3811. That's the 60 LED yeah. per meter strip. 60 LEDs for what half a meter long. Um, rules are if you want something before, you can't win again. Only one winner per my lifetime. The winner is going to receive a product number 3811. That's your prize. To win the prize, you have to call a phone number here. I'm gonna pick up the phone on this payphone, I'm going to ask you your name, where you're calling from, and a project you're working on or you want to work on. And if you can answer those three questions, you will win the product 3811. It's that easy. Okay. Let's see who calls. So call this number. But only if you haven't won before. If you have not won before, yeah. call this number. Oh, bit stab. You have to convert these number letters into numbers and oh, dial them and on. Turn it. your computer and down computer audio your audio down. Down. yeah can turn your audio down and that way it won't have echoey effects hello hello this is ask an engineer hello, hello. you are the hello. winner so please turn off your computer audio and then come back that's okay I hope you know back you know you won hello hi you won congratulations you won uh, what's your name and where are you calling from? My name is Gary and I'm calling from Australia. Ooh, wow, that's, right. that's pretty far away. Okay, so Gary from Australia, congratulations, you've won a NeoPixel strip from us. We're going to send it to you. Uh, what's a project you're working on or you want to work on? I am busy working on the Eye of Agamotto from Doctor Strange, and I'm using your chest to share things uh, breakout board to activate to do some magic. Ooh, neat. Okay, well, uh, Dr. Gary Strange. 
I knew I knew that they, the Avengers, they, they'd survived. They just moved to Australia. Um, all you have to do is email support at adafruit.com and say, hey, it's Gary. I run a product number 3811. Please send it to Australia. And they will. So thank you so much for calling and winning. You're the farthest person so far to win. And have a great afternoon or whatever time it is there. It's like four days in the future. All right. All right. Well, uh, great day. Good day to you, Good Gary. day, mate. Bye. <laughs> Bye. All right. Okay, Australia. I'd actually know. I think it's like nine in the morning or something. Yeah. Okay. Well, that was a show tonight, Lady Dana. That's right. Epic show. Epic. All right. Whew. Okay, we're here every week. We'll see you next week, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Ask an Engineer. Thank you, everyone, so much. All of our Adafruit team members, the community in Discord, all the places that people are watching. Don't forget the code is MoonLaser, 10% off in the Adafruit store, all the way up till 11:59 p.m. tonight or when I remember to take the code down. Thanks, everybody. Yep. Here is your moment of Zener. Good night.